Good morning to those of you who are here in church and to those of you watching online. Thank you for joining us today as we celebrate the 24th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Today, we begin our four-week preaching series entitled Surrender to Win. For 2,000 years, we Christians have discovered that the only way to win at life, in other words, the only way to find peace, freedom, and happiness is to follow Jesus. But Jesus reminds us in today's gospel that if we wish to follow him, we must deny ourselves and take up our cross. Ultimately, this means we must surrender to Jesus and accept our lives as they are, with the good and the bad. We have to surrender our desire for things to be different than they are and be at peace with the reality that is. Only then will we discover that in the spiritual life, surrendering does not mean losing. It means winning. Please remember to silence your cell phones so that we can worship God without distraction. Thank you. The celebrant for this Mass is Father Peter, and the preacher is Father Roberto. of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I took off my mask so you could see, yes, it's really Father Peter. And I'm Father Peter Rogers, and it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I am still president of the Dominican School of Philosophy and Theology in Berkeley, and I and so happy to be here for the opening of our newly renovated center. So as we enter into this sacred liturgy, the 24th Sunday of Ordinary Time, let us thank the Lord for his blessings that he pours upon us, and then ask the Lord for his mercy and forgiveness and compassion. Lord, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, you came to call sinners to yourself. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. 
receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you with all our heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. He is near who upholds my right. If anyone wishes to oppose me, let us appear together. Who disputes my right? Let that man confront me. See, the Lord God is my help, who will prove me wrong. The word of the Lord. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice in supplication because he has inclined his ear to me the day I called. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. The cords of death encompass me. The snares of the netherworld ceased upon me. I fell into distress and sorrow. And I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, save my life. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Gracious is the Lord and just. Yes, our God is merciful. The Lord keeps the little ones. I was brought low, and he saved me. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. For he has freed my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. I shall walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. A reading from the letter of St. James. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister has nothing to wear and has no food for the day, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm, and eat well. But you do not give them the necessities of the body. What good is it? So also, faith of itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Indeed, someone might say, 
You have faith, and I have works. Demonstrate your faith to me without works, and I will demonstrate my faith to you from my works. The Word of the Lord. Please sing along with me. Alleluia. 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 My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. Hear now a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. And may the word of God always be on our minds, on our lips, and in our hearts. Jesus and his disciples set out for the villages of Caesarea Philippi. Along the way, he asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? They said in reply, John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others one of the prophets. And he asked them, but who do you say that I am? Peter said to him in reply, you are the Christ. Then he warned them not to tell anyone about him. He began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer greatly and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed and rise after three days. He spoke this openly. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. At this, Jesus turned around and looking at his disciples, rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. He summoned the crowd with his disciples, and he said to them, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for my sake and that of the gospel will save it. The Gospel of the Lord. Isn't it great to have Father Peter Peter back visiting us? He's here for our special grand opening today of the Father Scanlon Center. Dr. Edith Egger was just 16 years old when she and her family were sent by the Nazis to the concentration camp at Auschwitz. The very day that they arrived at Auschwitz, both her parents were killed in the gas chamber. But somehow, miraculously, Edith survived Auschwitz and was eventually freed. But as you can imagine, she was terribly traumatized by what she had experienced at Auschwitz in those years. Eventually, after World War II, she moved to the United States and she became a therapist. Many years later, she was invited to return to Germany to teach. And it was during that time that she decided to go back to Auschwitz for the first time since the war. It was at that moment that she was finally able to forgive. To forgive the Nazis, 
to forgive life and to forgive God. This is how she later described that experience. She said, each moment is a choice. No matter how frustrating or painful or oppressive our experience, we can always choose how we respond. And I finally began to understand that I too had a choice. The choice to be responsible for my own happiness and to finally, finally stop running from the past. To do everything possible to redeem it and then let it go. And so I uttered my final words. Goodbye, I said, and thank you. Thank you for life and for the ability to finally accept the life that is. What a transforming moment that must have been for her. She was finally able to let go of all that physical, emotional, and spiritual pain and baggage that she had been carrying for so many years. This story is a great example of what I'm going to be preaching about during these coming weeks in this series entitled, Surrender to Win. And it is an especially appropriate story, an example of the title of today's homily, Everything Belongs, the Good and the Bad. Because you see, an essential part of Dr. Egger's transforming moment of forgiveness and healing was precisely her ability to accept that everything belongs. That every moment of her life, including the hellish trauma of Auschwitz she had experienced, somehow it all belonged in her life. Once she surrendered to her desire to change the past and to have a different life, she was able to deal with the life she did have, including its terrible past. And so she won, so to speak, because she was set free. As she said at the very end of her story, thank you for life and for the ability to finally accept the life that is. She surrendered and she won. My brothers and sisters, what I want to say to you today is that if you and I want to find peace, freedom, and happiness in this life, in other words, if we want to win at life, then we have to make the same choice that Dr. Egger made on that day of her transformation. We too have to choose to surrender by accepting our life exactly as it is, with the good and the bad. We have to surrender our desire for things to be different than they are and be at peace with the reality that is. To me, this is an important part of what Jesus said in today's gospel when he said, whoever wishes to come after me must deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. Certainly, our crosses can be any number of things in our lives, right? But one of the main crosses that we must carry is the cross of accepting our life just as it is, including our struggles and our sufferings. That means we have to deny our desire to run away from our past or to reject our present so that we can deal with them in a healthy way with the help of the Lord. And the only way we are going to be able to do all that is by believing what I'm going to tell you right now, which is the most important thing I will say to you today. Everything that has happened to you 
in your life, the good and the bad, is God's will for you. Let me repeat that. Everything that has happened to you in your life, the good and the bad, is God's will for you. One of the greatest theologians in the history of our Catholic Church, St. Augustine, said this very same thing in the 5th century, way back in the 5th century. And he said it this way, Nothing happens that the Almighty does not will should happen, either by permitting it or by himself doing it. In other words, God has either directly wanted or at least permitted every single thing that has happened in the history of our world and in your life. Now, let me be clear. As I've said a number of times before, God does not want evil things to happen in the world or in our lives. God does not create evil or send evil to us, but God does permit evil. And one of the reasons that God permits evil is to use it to bring about something good through it. Again, St. Augustine said this same thing, and he said it this way. God is so good that in his hand, even evil brings about good. He would never have permitted evil to occur if he had not, thanks to his perfect goodness, been able to use it. That means, again, God has never caused or wanted any natural disaster. This pandemic, 9-11, any tragedy, war, human conflict, poverty, famine, sickness, injury, death, or loss we have experienced as a human race or as individuals. He's never wanted or caused any of that. However, God knew about all these things beforehand, and he permitted them to occur. And he has willed from all eternity to use every one of these evils and all this suffering to accomplish something good in our world and in our lives. This is exactly what St. Paul says in his letter to the Romans, chapter 8, verse 28, when he said, God makes everything work for good for those who love him. That is a scripture that is worth memorizing and saying to ourselves whenever we are struggling in our lives, God makes everything work for good for those who love him. The question is, do you believe that God has that power? And then do you trust God to use that power in your life to bring something good to you or to others through your suffering. Now, let me be clear. This does not mean that you and I have to go out there looking to suffer. No. It does not mean that we have to like the evil that God has permitted. And it does not mean that we cannot try to do something to improve a difficult situation in which we find ourselves. By all means, God wants us to use our faith, our strength, our brains, and our determination to make things better. Yes, of course. But at some point, we have to say like Jesus did the night before he was crucified, Father, not my will but your will be done. And then we have to let go and trust that God will bring something good from our suffering. As I told you last week, this preaching series and today's homily are based on the insights and the healing that I received from reading and praying through one of the most powerful spiritual books I have ever read, entitled, Into Your Hands, Father. 
It's the book that we sold last week and it's still available in the parish office. And I encourage you, if you haven't done so yet, to buy a copy of that book either here or online and let it hopefully uh, help you in your life. There's also a powerful prayer called the Prayer of Abandonment in these homily reflection guides that I've put together that you can receive as you leave church today. It's also our theme song throughout this series, and it'll be used today at communion, that prayer set to music. So I invite you to pray that prayer of abandonment throughout these four weeks of the preaching series. My brothers and sisters, as I mentioned earlier, this preaching series is entitled Surrender to Win. God wants you to win at life. He wants you to win at life by finding peace, freedom, and happiness. But the only way you will do that is by surrendering to Jesus, first of all, and then by accepting the life that God has given to you, by accepting that everything that has happened belongs in your life, the good and the bad. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, surrender to win. As we pray our faith in God by praying the Nicene Creed, we, in fact, are surrendering our Lord to our Lord our lives. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified who had spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting with St. Paul that God makes everything work for good for those who love him. We lift up to the Lord all our needs with confidence, knowing that he will hear and answer our prayers according to his gracious will. For the grace to surrender ourselves more completely to Jesus by accepting and learning from the good and the bad that occurs in our lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, pray. For those who are carrying heavy crosses in their lives, that they may 
be comforted, strengthened, and trust more deeply in God's power to bring about good from their suffering, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the victims of the 9-11 terrorist attacks 20 years ago and their families, and for an end to terrorism and the conversion of violent hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church in the Archdiocese of Los Angeles, that during the Forward in Mission Jubilee year, we may demonstrate our faith through works of mercy in responding to the needs of others in this time of crisis. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the continued recovery of those who have been affected by the pandemic, fires, floods, hurricanes, and other natural disasters, and for God's protection of first responders and health care workers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Rochelle, Joey, and Rosalind Ochoa on their birthdays, whom we remember in a special way at this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions in our Book of Intentions and those we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Everlasting God, we believe that all things are possible to you and that you have the desire and power to bring good from all that happens in our lives and in our world. Please receive and answer our prayers, which make in, we make in the name of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Pray now, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look of favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these, your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, By the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your, your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, 
St. Joseph, her husband, our Holy Father Dominic, our sister Catherine of Siena, St. Lorenzo Ruiz, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and the salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, the order of bishops and all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassionate, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Father's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. For those not receiving communion and those of us uh, joining us online today, we pray, my Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you, amen. Amen. Amen.
number five on the song card. Number five.
Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies so that its effects and not our own desires may always prevail in us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank all those who have joined us virtually online today, and uh, it's wonderful to be here with all of you, and I look forward to our celebration uh, later this morning to open the Father Scanlon Center. It's a huge event for all of us here at the parish. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to glorify the Lord by your lives. Thanks be, be to God. God. But before you go, there are announcements. I invite you to be seated. As we mentioned in uh, former weeks, we are blessed this year to have with us Brother Thaddeus Frost, who is a student brother and will be with us until June. So I'd like to invite Brother Thaddeus forward to say a few words about himself, to introduce himself to you. Hello, as Father Roberto. Oh. <laughs> As Father Roberto said, my name is Brother Thaddeus. Thank you for uh, giving me the uh, opportunity. He's right behind me, so uh, hello. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to be able to speak to all of you. Um, I am a student brother at, in the Western Dominican province. And I am studying to become, God willing, a priest one day. Um, and I want to take this opportunity to, um, of course, introduce myself, but also just to say that it is such a pleasure and an honor to be serving you for this year. It truly is. Uh, and for now, I, since this is the first time that many of you will have ever really had any meaningful interaction with me, um, I thought this was a, would be a good opportunity to tell you a bit about myself. So. I'm from a small town in Utah called Draper, about 30 minutes south of Salt Lake City. Um, I am a cradle Catholic. I was raised Catholic, but there were a lot of things missing in my faith formation as a, as a kid. And so because of that, uh, I had a lot of uh, searching to do when I was young. And I thank God for this lack, in fact, because it was because of this, this absence that I learned to seek after and to, to hunger for Jesus Christ, um, to seek out that truth and that beauty that is our Catholic faith. It really wasn't until college, though, that I began to truly understand that faith, and this was in no small part because of the Dominicans. I met them when I was at the University of Utah, and the fir this was the first time that I had really encountered priests that were able to take, on the one hand, the great spiritual truths of our faith, and also the great unfathomable love of Jesus Christ, and managed to meld these things two together in that special way that our faith is capable of doing. And so I was won over by this completely, of course, that's a big part of the reason I stand here before you today wearing a habit. And throughout this year, I hope to be able to share these truths that I have learned in my faith journey with all of you, to share my relationship with Jesus Christ with all of you, and that together we might deepen our understanding and our love of Jesus Christ our Savior. So thank you again for inviting me into your community, and God bless all of you. We're all looking forward to having Brother Thaddeus with us, especially our Dominican brothers, our Dominican community. Our other announcements for this weekend, there's going to be a bilingual healing mass on Friday, September 24th, 
in which we will have the sacrament of the anointing of the sick as well as individual prayer for those who wish the, the unbound team that has been uh, trained here in our parish is willing to sit down and, and pray with uh, anyone who wants to do that. So that's again Friday, the, September 24th. You'll hear more about this in the coming weeks. Uh, don't forget that our Girl Scout troop is having a food drive to feed the hungry. If you'd like to leave your donations at the parish office, you may do so either on Sundays or during the week. Father Francis has begun, begun a grief support group on Wednesdays, so please see the bulletin for more information about that for any of you who have lost a loved one and are grieving. There's also a Monday night Bible study that will begin tomorrow evening, and there's more information in the bulletin about that. Again, a great opportunity to learn more about the scriptures, about God's word. And once again, the book um, for the preaching series is available in the parish office for $10. And please don't forget about our Color Run, which uh, is a fundraiser for our parish as well as a fun social event, and that'll be on Saturday, September 25th. You can sign up to walk, jog, or run in that. Uh, it's going to be around our parking lot and get sprayed with colored powder and so on. And, or you can just simply sponsor somebody who's doing that to raise funds for our parish. There will also be food available at that event, and you can buy pre-sale food tickets at the parish office. Uh, for that day. And I'm challenging our, our prince, school principal, and I know I will beat her, and it'll help me if you give me money to do that. So please support me. Next week, we'll have a special collection for the retirement of diocesan priests, not Dominican priests, but diocesan priests that serve here in the diocese, and, and many have done so well, so faithfully for many years. So please be generous. Uh, there will be special uh, envelopes in the pews for that. And again, as Father Peter mentioned, we will be having our grand opening of the Father Scanlon Center. There's going to be a special ribbon uh, cutting ceremony at 1030, but all day long the, the, the center will be open. And on the second floor of the center is a ministry fair. So many of our parish ministries have set up tables to share with you what they do here in the parish and invite you to join us in serving one another and serving God. So please stop by to see what possibilities there are for you to share the the gifts and talents that God has given to you on the second floor. We now have an elevator so you can get up to the second floor if you're not able to go up the steps. And please, once again, take those homily reflection guides that I re, uh, referred to in my homily. They're available at all the exits as you leave the church today with scriptures, reflections, and so on. And once again, I want to thank Father Peter for being with us today. Great to have you here. Thank you so much for coming to Mass today, and please stop by the community center afterwards.